Merry Christmas. Uh, it's good to have you all here and good to be here with you tonight as we celebrate the anniversary of our Lord's birth. Uh, there are just a couple announcements I'd like to share with you before we begin. Uh, most of them are by way of, of thank you. Uh, thank you especially to the Sunday school teachers uh, who put in a lot of time and, and effort uh, uh, leading our children. I, I hope you'll enjoy our program tonight. Uh, tonight's program was written by a member of our congregation, uh, Faith Swenson, uh, happens to be my wife. Uh, she's unable to be with us here tonight due to a sick child, uh, so we are, are thankful to Faith uh, and for her efforts in that. Uh, also, we are thankful to Cheryl Schaefer, uh, who we are embarrassing right now. Uh, but she is filling in for Faith tonight uh, on, on very short notice, uh, so she'll be playing and accompanying our children and accompanying us as well, so we are very thankful for that. Uh, thank you to the, the bell choir uh, and the other uh, musicians that will be singing and playing for us this evening. Uh, tonight is just the beginning of the, the 12 days of Christmas, and we will be having some other special services throughout these next days. Tomorrow morning, we'll be having Christmas Day service. Uh, that will be down at Grace and Jessup, uh, and also on the live stream here. And then on January 6th, we'll be having an Epiphany service, uh, and that will be here on January 6th at 7 p.m. Tonight's order of service is evening prayer which is found on page 243. Uh, tonight, the parts that are marked L will be for me, and the parts that are C, I invite you to join me for. I invite you to stand. Jesus Christ is the light of the world. The light no darkness can overcome. Stay with us, Lord, for it is evening, and the day is almost over. Let your light scatter the darkness and illumine your church. Joyous light of glory, of the immortal Father, heavenly, holy, blessed Jesus Christ. We have come to the setting of the sun, and we look to the evening light. We sing to God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you are worthy of being praised with pure voices forever. O Son of God, O giver of life, the universe proclaims your glory. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe who led your people Israel by a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. Enlighten our darkness by the light of your Christ. May his word be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path, for you are merciful and you love your whole creation. And we, your creatures, glorify you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated as we continue with hymn 379.
proclaim the Savior's birth, Jesus' birth was promised to happen, even all the way back in the Garden of Eden, to Adam and Eve after sin entered the world. In fact, throughout the Old Testament, we read about Israel waiting for the promised Savior to come. The prophets proclaimed a baby born of a virgin, born in Bethlehem, a descendant of David. When you, O Bethlehem Ephrathah, who are too little to be among the clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to be ruler in Israel, whose coming forth is from of old, from ancient days. Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Continue with hymn 384. The bell choir will be playing an introduction to the hymn, and a soloist will sing stanza one, then we as a congregation will sing stanzas three and five.
proclaim this proclaim the Savior's birth just as the old as the prophets proclaimed Christ's coming in the Old Testament. John the Baptist also proclaimed the Christ. He was the one to prepare the way for Jesus. He encouraged people to repent of their sins, preparing their hearts for the one who had come to die for their sins. The word of God came to John, the son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. And he went into all the region around the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. Stanzas one and two. Proclaim the Savior's birth. An angel separately proclaimed the coming Christ to Jesus' earthly parents. The angel shared the unique situation about God, coming humbly as a person. He would do this by coming the same way the rest of us came into this world, as a baby. From Luke chapter 1. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, O favored one, the Lord is with you. But Mary was troubled at the saying, and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid. How will this be since I am a virgin? The Holy Spirit will come upon you. The child you will be the Son of God. Nothing even after the time. The Holy chapter 2. In those days a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. 
This was the first registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria. And all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling cloths, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the end. We continue by singing him 383. <laughs> Proclaim the Savior's birth while God sent only one angel to Mary and then to Joseph. He sent a whole multitude of angels to proclaim the good news to shepherds in the fields. And in the same region, there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Far unto you is born this day in the city of David the Savior, who is Christ the Lord, and this will be a sign for you, you will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and laying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying,
shepherds and their sheep want to see the baby. They want to see the baby. They want to share. They want to share. Jesus everywhere. Jesus everywhere. Proclaim the Savior's birth. After the shepherds had visited Mary, Joseph, and baby Jesus, they didn't go back to the fields and keep quiet. Instead, they shared the good news about Jesus' birth with who, those they saw. And the shepherds went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them.
And the children will be singing the refrain. Proclaim the Savior's birth, we come at last to the famous Magi, the wise men from the East. The announcement of Jesus' birth was proclaimed to them in a unique way. God put a star in the sky to announce the good news. Now, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the East came to Jerusalem. Wise men saw the star, the star proclaimed Jesus' birth. The wise men went to Herod, the star proclaimed Jesus' birth. Herod's people searched the word of God, the word of God proclaimed Jesus' birth. The baby was to be born in Bethlehem, the word of God proclaimed Jesus' birth. The star reappeared and rested over the place where Jesus was. The star proclaimed Jesus' birth. sing stanzas one and two.
proclaim the Savior's birth. The Old Testament and prophets proclaim the coming Savior of the world. That Savior was Jesus. The people and angels who witnessed Christ's birth shared the news with the people they encountered. After Jesus' death and resurrection, his followers proclaimed Jesus to the world as our risen Lord and Savior who died for our sins and rose victoriously so that we might have eternal life. We are also Jesus' followers and we get to proclaim the good news of Jesus to the world. We can share Jesus with... Chichos. Maybe. As we reflect on Christ's birth this holy Christmas Eve, forgetting that the death he died for you and me, this important truth we must now share to our neighbors, friends, and people everywhere. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Proclaim the Savior's birth. These are the words we have heard from our children, the theme of our program tonight. We hope you were encouraged by the words read and sung, and we pray that you are comforted by the truth of the Lord's birth, and led by Him to share this good news with others. This is also what we are taught by the Apostle John. In another traditional Christmas Eve reading from 1 John chapter 4, 
In this the love of God was made manifest among us, that God sent his only Son into the world so that we might live through him. He sent his Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. By the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, St. John wrote these words, along with two other letters to Christians spread throughout Asia Minor, a country today we would call Turkey. He wrote to them because there had been a harmful division among them. So dangerous was the idea that had led to the division that it threatened to destroy the church in that area. During St. John's time, there was a considerable pagan influence in the area, both in religion and philosophy. And where the two met was this. Many simply could not accept that God could also be man, not in any real way, at least. They could not accept that God could die on a cross, nor could they accept that he could be born, just like we all were. St. John wrote to his flock as their pastor and an apostle, an eyewitness of Jesus Christ. He knew the Lord, traveled with him, saw the miracles, and reclined at table with him. John was one of the first witnesses of the resurrection. He wrote to his spiritual children that these things truly happened, for they were the way that God proclaimed his love for the world. We remember from Scripture and observe from creation that there is a creator. God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is that creator of all things both visible and invisible. Although he created all things perfect and good, that perfection was shattered when our first parents sinned. From then, the corruption of sin has spread throughout the world, even to us. In its wake flows death and disaster of every kind. In this interconnected world, we need only two seconds on our phone to bear witness to a broken, a fallen, a sinful creation. Of his own initiative and for the sake of his own love, God determined to remedy the situation. And the remedy would be this, that God would become man. He would keep the Ten Commandments perfectly and then pay for the sins of the world by dying on the cross. After three days, he would rise from the dead to restore the hope of eternal life to all who would believe. But we celebrate tonight and tomorrow and for the rest of the 12 days, is that in the birth of Jesus Christ, God proclaimed his love for us. It is the love that saw him enter into time and space, to be raised in poverty and adversity. It is a love that caused him to suffer the death of friends and loved ones. Out of love for us, he was hated by his own people. To proclaim his love for us, he inscribed our names in his palms with nails into a tree. And then for the sake of his love for us, he broke death's bars and its hold over us. God the Father proclaimed his love for us by sending his Son into the flesh for us. How shall we respond? First, with thanksgiving. And not just tonight, but always. For some of us here tonight, this is our yearly service. And if this is the case for you, and we thank you for being here. And we hope that you will join us again sooner than next year. Being a Christian means being brought into a life of thanksgiving toward God. Privately in our hearts, yes. But also in person with other Christians. And the second way we respond to God's love is, as St. John says, by loving one another. He doesn't mean just by giving presents although that is good fun and probably for a lot of us has started already. The word that John uses for love is a word that is uncommon outside of the Bible, rare. In the ancient world and in our own has no purpose for it. The word that St. John uses is for a love that sacrifices self for the sake of the neighbor. And this is exactly what God, Jesus, did for us and it's what he invites us to do for each other. Tonight is a time for us to be reminded of these things and to be recalled to our senses. On Christmas, we give thanks that God proclaimed his love for us. 
May he grant us to receive his love and faith so that we too might proclaim it to our neighbor. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We will continue with the order of evening prayer, beginning with the Magnificat on page 248. I invite you to stand as we sing. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has regarded the lowliness of his handmaiden. For behold, from this day all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things to me, and holy is His name. And His mercy is on those who fear Him from generation to generation. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. Rejoices in God my Savior. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has exalted the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent empty away. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham and to his seed forever. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. For Matthew and Brian, for all pastors in Christ, for all servants of the church, and for all the people, let us pray to the Lord. For Joseph, for all public servants, for the government and those who protect us, that they may be upheld and strengthened in every good deed, let us pray to the Lord. For those who work to bring peace, justice, health, and protection in this and every place, let us pray to the Lord. For those who bring offerings, those who do good works in this congregation, those who toil, those who sing, and all the people here present who await from the Lord great and abundant mercy, 
Let us pray to the Lord. For favorable weather, for an abundance of the fruits of the earth, and for peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. For our deliverance from all affliction, wrath, danger, and need, let us pray to the Lord. For the shut-ins of our congregation and those whom we love who are unable to be with here this evening, let us pray to the Lord. For the faithful who have gone before us and are with Christ, let us give thanks to the Lord. Alleluia. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Rejoicing in the fellowship of all the saints, let us commend ourselves, one another, and our whole life to Christ our Lord. To you, O Lord, O God, you make us glad with the yearly remembrance of the birth of your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that as we joyfully receive him as our Redeemer, we may with sure confidence behold him when he comes to be our judge. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O God, from whom come all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works, give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. Amen. Uh, now it is our tradition as a congregation to sing our closing hymn, Silent Night, by candlelight. So I do hope that you all received a candle as you came in. Uh, some notes for using this. Once your candle is lit, it'll be lit by an elder from the inside pew there. Uh, dip your candle like this to light off of your neighbor. Once your candle is lit, do not uh, dip it because the, the wax will go and you'll get burned and that would not be fun. Uh, we will continue then with our closing hymn, Silent Night. Mm -hmm. 